Howdy, Tolks! This week's episode is going to be a little bit different. There are some scheduling issues behind the scenes that have caused me to push back our return to the Silmarillion. I promise it's not just because I'm procrastinating because I don't want to read the Silmarillion again. We will come back to it next week and finish it up. I think by the end of November, we'll finish up the Silmarillion. This week, I didn't want to leave you guys hanging, so I'm sharing some very important audio from a live stream event that I was a part of last week with Fandom Forward. If you don't know, Fandom Forward is an organization that uses the power of fandom to bring people together in order to work on a cause that everyone cares about collectively. It's essentially a fellowship. It's exactly what Tolkien wrote, but it's in real life and it's beautiful. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh Lord, here she goes getting all political again. I've seen those reviews on Apple Podcasts that criticize me for getting quote unquote political during this podcast and would rather me just stick exclusively to Tolkien and Lord of the Rings and not put my own personal perspective on it. I think it's important to talk about a lot of these issues. And I also think it's important for me to use my platform to talk about these issues with you guys. And I don't think it's that crazy of an idea for some of these things to come up on a Tolkien podcast, because a lot of the times these are things that the characters in Middle Earth would care about if they were in our world. These are things that Tolkien himself would care about if he were still alive today. And actually, I think the issue that I was brought on the live stream to discuss is the number one thing that Tolkien would care about the most, which is climate change. We all know Jolkin Rolkin Rolkin loved himself a tree. Yeah, he's the biggest tree hugger of them all. And you can see his love for nature and the beauty of the world come through all of his works. And I just love your, you'll hear it in the live stream where I just like ramble and scream about the Ents, but the story of the Ents rising up and fighting against Saruman and, you know, their own destruction. And also the fact that it's, it's Merry and Pippin, these two little sidekick hobbits who awaken that power in them is so beautiful and amazing. And I think that makes for a very powerful story when we're encouraging people to vote about climate change. The midterm elections in the United States are one week away as this episode comes out, and there are going to be candidates on several ballots throughout the country that are going to be making decisions on climate change. And those decisions are going to affect us for generations to come. This live stream was in collaboration with Vote Forward, which allows you to write letters to potential voters and encourage them to vote and tell them about why you're voting and why certain issues are important to you. And I am so excited to share that as a result of the live stream, 5,000 letters were written to climate voters. That's fantastic. That's 5,000 people. First of all, I love it when I get mail that's not an electricity bill. I would love it if I opened my mailbox and there was a handwritten letter from a real person. That's so wonderful these days. And also to hear from someone And to have them tell me that my vote matters and is really important is so powerful and wonderful. Galadriel said it herself in Fellowship of the Ring. One person has the power to change the course of the future. That's exactly what Lord of the Rings is about, is this tiny hobbit who against all odds changes the world. Isn't that amazing? So... Here is some of the live stream coming up. A little context. Katie Bowers from Fandom Forward was the host of the event. So that's one of the voices you will hear. Now, before I came on, she was talking to Delia of Black Nerds Create. We all know and love Delia. And I asked her, I was like, hey, can I include your part of the live stream in this episode as well? Because Delia also talked about Lord of the Rings. So first you will hear Katie and Delia talking, and then Katie will invite me on and I will just scream about the Ents is basically what I do. And we will be back next week with the Silmarillion. But until then, enjoy. Delia! Oh, I'm such a professional. I was muted, but here we go. Hi. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome, Delia. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Longtime friend and uh, have done some important projects with Fandom Forward. But tonight... Just a few. (laughs) (laughs) Tonight, 
you are not here with your fandom forward hat. You are here. Not, let me <laughs> there we adjust go. accordingly. Thank you. <laughs> um, you are here from uh, Black Nerds Create. You want to tell us uh, a little bit about yourself and about BNC? Sure. I'm, for those who don't know me, I'm sure y'all see me around here and there on the interwebs, but my name is Delia Gallegos. I'm the uh, Chief Financial Officer and Creative Director for Black Nerds Create. Black Nerds Create is a collective that provides content through the lens of critical and creative fandom in order to advocate for and contribute to meaningful representation in media for Black folks specifically and systemically marginalized people in general. Uh, we do a lot of cool stuff over there. We have a lot of cool content, which we're going to talk about. <laughs> um, and yeah, just really passionate about creative fandom, mostly. That's we really, we really just have the best time with fan creators over there. Y'all churn out an, like a prolific level of content. <laughs> and I know there was some like intentional like scaling back of some projects, but it does not reflect at all on the outside. From from the outside, it's just like this. This is a machine. We we love to hear it because there was very intentional scaling back because we got to protect our protect our energy. However, I'm glad that we are still providing the content people love to see. Yeah, it's true. So, uh, speaking of people content content people love to see, um, tonight people are writing letters and we are talking. Uh, we're writing letters to climate focused voters in Pennsylvania. Um, and so we are talking about some stories that are epics that in some way relate to the environment. Now, very clearly, you are broadcasting from the Shire. <laughs> I am. I, I flew I flew specifically to broadcast. I thought it was the most appropriate place to broadcast from. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Have they been, have the hobbits been hospitable to you? They've been hospitable. The Wi-Fi is not great, but we're making do. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. They don't seem like a... a, a you know, big connected kind of people, uh, internet wise. But <laughs> what, since you're in the Shire anyway, what has BNC been doing around Lord of the Rings lately? Boy, so much. <laughs> um, we've been, so, you know, the Rings of Power, for those who aren't in the Tolkien fandom, just came out. The first season has completely aired now over on, on um, that website. <laughs> and <Prime. laughs> yeah, on Prime. Uh, and in the lead up, we were dropping what was once our limited podcast behind a Patreon wall um, called Token Black Girls. But um, and uh, we Love released it. that to the public. Added another uh, special episode for the Rings of Power right before it dropped. Um, we also have been pushing and engaging with folks on the hashtag hashtag Token Black Folks, where Black you know Token fans can just chat with each other, you know, share memes, you know, the whole shebang. And then most recently, once that it was actually airing, we were doing live tweets with Phenology alongside um, Yvette Nicole Brown, the Nerds of Color, Geeks of Color, and Daisy Geek Girls. Um, and we also did some spaces, which those just dropped on podcast feeds where you can find them, um, Token Black Girls, if you want to check those out. They were a whole lot of fun just discussing episode by episode. <laughs> I think I got it all. This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> this is so much. That's been awesome. It's been very cool to see this, like, new new ish i mean i know it's based on like existing lore and stories but to oh, see to see this story in a new way has been uh very so cool. fun yeah. so cool i just it's given me so much joy like I'm, i've always been in fandom i'm a, I'm a nerd we all know you we, if you're here you know <laughs> how it is but i just feel so reinvigorated after uh the rings of power that's I love it. I love it. What? So I want to talk a little bit about what we're talking about tonight and the climate. Um, I'm curious, like, what do you think are some of the connections that you see between Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power, X, the whole, the whole pantheon the whole there <laughs> and the I climate? Think, yeah, I think there's a whole, whole lot. Um, it's noticeable even in, like, you know, the original trilogy in the movies, but, like, Tolkien's works definitely show connections with, like, environmentalism and, and uh, themes of, like, concerns about climate. Uh, mm -hmm. He was super, super concerned in his lifetime with, like, the encroaching of um, industrialization on English countryside. Like, it was something he hated to see. He wanted yeah. to, like, preserve nature. He wanted a natural way of life. And, like, this is very much in his works and tradition 
I would say his messages are more steeped in traditionalism, which there's critiques there. However, um, uh, generally, like you can still pull through a modern lens, like these themes of like industrialization and what that does to the climate and what that, that does to the people. Like you see it directly affected it. Like you see, especially with the scouring of the shower, which isn't in the original trilogy, but uh, kind of, um, but you know, taking this thing that was pristine and beautiful because it was natural, because it was traditional and like what that does to the people and like the ill effects on like health and things like that, which also for his time, like mm-hmm. too, super radical, like nobody was talking about yeah. this. Like you're seeing Mordor as a wasteland. You see the industrialization of Isengard. What does it mean uh, for the Ents and things like that? And I think what's particularly poignant about Tolkien's works and how he showcases this is that he, it's always like a tragedy, right? It's even when we can revert back, we can't go back all the way. Like once something is marred, like as far as nature, like, and once we've harmed it, we can't go back. And so I think it's really like a warning from him. Um, it's a bit dire at times, but uh, you know, I, and you know, it all ends in a happy ending ultimately, but I think he delves in like happy endings, but we're not unaffected. And so I think there's a lot of parallels when talking about climate, like this is a fight we can fight. However, we do also have to reckon with the effects that we're already seeing in that, Some, maybe, at least for our lifetimes, mostly permanent. Yeah. But it's worth fighting. And it's worth, it's worth, like, there's wins to be had, including tonight when we're getting voters out to, uh, you know, vote, vote for things that they feel are going to help the climate. Um, Absolutely. And I love uh, getting to talk to people, like... I really enjoy Lord of the Rings. Like, I have seen the movies. I'm watching Rings of Power now. I haven't watched all of it. Um, no spoilers. <laughs> yeah, don't get super spoil- spoilery. This one, like, we just had, Carter was on talking about Percy Jackson and worried about spoilers. And part of me was like, well, the books came out in, like, 2005. Right. So I think we could let that <laughs> slide. Uh, but Rings of Power did just come out. So we won't be spoilery there. But, um, and I've read uh, a number of the books. Uh but it's like it's not like my deep lore that I've gotten into, and I love getting to talk to people who are very deep into it and <laughs> are able to say like, "Oh yeah, like Tolkien was absolutely a, an outspoken, like kind of radical thinker for his time," and da 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 da, because that's not something that's crossed my path before. <laughs> um, I'm just like, yeah, the ends. <laughs> <laughs> they were there them I trees them. <laughs> they're they're cool. they got lost that's all i know <laughs> yeah uh so there is uh there is uh a theme in mm-hmm. lord of the rings right uh one ring well rings of power one <laughs> ring we're talking about one vote that can be used to protect so many different things uh do you think there's anything that Lord of the Rings can kind of teach us about using our one vote to protect Oh my others? gosh, so much. I just, I really, uh, really love this question because, like, I, that's what the story is about, right? Like, I mean, if you look at the, it depends, you know, where in the Tolkien lore, but especially uh, the original trilogy, for sure. That's what it, it's about, right? It's about, like, you know, small people doing uh, small acts, I guess you could say, um, that eventually lead to the greater good, right? Like you have Galadriel says to Frodo in the movies that even the smallest person can change the course of the future. But also in the books, uh, Elrond, not not Hot Rings of Power Elrond, the other one. <laughs> <laughs> traditional Elrond. Yeah, traditional Elrond. He's talking to Gandalf um, in Fellowship, uh, talking about destroying the ring. And he says that small hands do them, like do these deeds, because they must, while the eyes of the great are elsewhere. And I just think it's just so important to remember that, you know, sometimes we feel small or powerless, but like that's not the whole story. Um and we must do these small things and small things that are within our power to affect greater change, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Um, or like in Rings of Power, hello, that is the whole story of Nori and the Harfoots. And I'm, you know, no spoilers. But, you know, she does say at one point, without friends, what are we surviving for? Like she, her whole story is about doing what she can, what is within her for others, right? Like not even just, you know, for myself, but she's like, this is what it's about. That's why we're here is to do what we can for others. So. She is a real, like, I, I can see her being a fandom forward member. Like, oh, absolutely. 
I saw I saw her and I was just like, I I know this girl. I know this girl. She, <laughs> I've interacted like, with her many times before. She's been at many a con. <laughs> yeah. That's, oh, that's funny. Listen, I uh I know that this has been such a joyful project for y'all and you have come up against like a space in the Tolkien fandom that has some has some hot garbage, hot non joyful garbage going on. Very much um, so. <laughs> so I really like I I don't want to delve into that because that's like your space is much more joyful than that. But for uh, fans of color who have watched the show or have like wanted to watch the show but like haven't felt necessarily a place in the fandom, like how do they how do they get involved with y'all? How do they uh, you know? What do you what do you want to say on this topic? Boy, we don't have enough time for all I want to say on this topic. So, <laughs> in brief, uh, I think first of all, carving out intentional spaces for yourself, like this is something we talk about in the Fandom Coalition, like being intentional first and foremost, always. Like even if it's by yourself, intentional how you're engaging in other spaces where you're going, um, and sometimes the best thing you can do for yourself is engage in fandom by yourself, which sounds sad, but like you got to protect your peace. But if you're looking for spaces, first of all, we have the hashtag Tolkien Black Folks um, hashtag where if you're black, you can find your people. But in general, also like uh, black girls create like we again support we black people first and foremost, but also are supporting um, uh, you know, marginalized people in general. And we have a vibrant discord community of people from all different backgrounds like you could get in there we talk lord of the rings very in depth we've done uh, community reads we've read um through the hobbit the trilogy the silmarillion with more reads planned um and you know you just have to find your people and start feeling around but being intentional about how you do that like don't just jump into hashtags just to jump into hashtags because they aren't all safe unfortunately but we really by like by holding to the tenants essentially from the phantom coalition like we are able to carve out a space that feels joyful in spite of it um, and it, the hate is there, of course, it always there, but you know, especially once you build that community, you can just kind of laugh it off together and move forward in fun and creativity. <laughs> I think that's really like, yeah, it's beautiful, man. Cause there's haters all always. over the place. <laughs> um, y'all have really built a space that, uh, I think feels really welcoming to a lot of people, um, who do not who do not want to partake in that kind of nonsense and mm -hmm. i don't know i think it's i think it's wonderful we love y'all you know that <laughs> oh we love you too you know that <laughs> ah. Ah. <laughs> all right enough of this nonsense we're we're meeting we're meeting also tomorrow fandom forward and black nerds create to talk about like the next phase of the fan <laughs> organizer coalition which uh black nerds create is also part of so more cool projects to come. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But Delia, before you depart, um, we, everybody's working on their letters tonight. They are adopting voters to write to, um, sort of in the spirit of uh, the Tolkien world. Is there anything you want to tell folks about the heroic work that they're doing for the climate tonight? Cheer them on. I am just, I love the work that's being done. I was watching earlier and feeling very inspired. Um, it really got me to thinking about how, like, I vote. Why do I vote? And for me, personally, it's because I really just feel like I must. Like, kind of like Elrond's saying, like, small hands must do this work. Um, but specifically, I feel like when talking about climate, I feel like, especially for BIPOC people, we often feel left out of that discussion. And so I think it's imperative that we be a part of that discussion because these climate issues affect us. Like, you know, um, disenfranchised people hurt most when, um, you know, these drastic climate changes are happening. And we see these disastrous storms and um, weather cycles. Uh, and, you know, also we benefit, <laughs> I think we stand to benefit the most, like from a more egalitarian climate focused world mm -hmm. um so focusing on stories about that and making your voice heard because if you don't feel like you have space in the conversation you're gonna have to make space in the conversation so write that letter yay oh man <laughs> i that's fantastic that's fantastic delia um we talked 
brought we talked about Lord of the Rings stuff, but if people want to find BNC for other things, other work, where do they go? Uh, brief. Um, currently, we brought back our our uh, penultimate <laughs> podcast, really, Wizard Team, hashtag Wizard Team, for Billy Hammer, Bonner Farmcast. But now we are covering um, just general Other black way. fantasy, currently reading through Amari and the Night Brothers. Episode two, I believe, drops Wednesday, so it's not too late to get in on this book. It's a great book. Uh, it's, I think, it's marked so it as like good. men. Yeah, Men in Black meets Harry Potter. It's so good with a black uh, girl protagonist get in it we would love to have you listen it's wherever podcasts are found but in general for anything else we're doing we're we cover so much nerdy stuff you can find us at at blacknerdscreate.com at blacknerdscreate that's at blk nerdscreate again use the hashtag token black folks if you want specifically lord of the rings stuff um and you can find me at delia is typing did you have asked yay beautiful (laughs) delia thank you so much for being here tonight you're welcome delight I love partying with y'all. Y'all know. <laughs> Yay. All right. We're going to show you off to the green dragon now. Okay. Uh, you're amazing. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> uh, that was fantastic. Before we bring on our next guest, I'm going to do a little refresher for folks. Uh, we are writing letters with Vote Forward tonight and also anytime up to October 29th. So if you are watching the recording of this, which I know a lot, a lot of people do, um, if it's before October 29th, there is still time for you. You can go to voteforward.org slash fandom forward. I think we have a banner for that if somebody wants to throw that up on there oh maybe we don't oh we do hey so if you go right there that is where you can find all the voters that we are writing to there are like five thousand of them available so uh go check in depending on what time you're watching this um there might still be people available um but it's very easy we are writing folks to that we are writing uh climate focused letters to folks who are really moved by climate stories and so you want to talk about um authentic specific compelling story of why it is that you're voting and why it is you care about the climate and why voting is going to matter to the climate um so go there uh get some voters send them a lovely letter um also support our campaign you can go to phantomforward.org shop where we have beautiful one vote protects t-shirts they have a whole bunch of issues that we care very much about and how they're all interconnected and it's a very cool shirt and it's nonpartisan, so you won't get in trouble for wearing it to your polling place um so check that out now i'm going to bring on our next guest for the evening. Hey! hey! Mary Clay, hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm very excited to have you here. I feel like we have interacted in every medium except YouTube live stream. Yes, so... I, I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> this is a new milestone for us. I'm very excited. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about who are you? What brings you here? What's your podcast? What's going on? I didn't realize we have an all podcaster guest list today. Let's keep it's the good ca- times rolling. We're the coolest. We're the coolest kind of people there are. Um, <laughs> I say that one hundred percent sarcastically. Uh, yeah, I host a podcast called "That's What I'm Talking About." Amazing I, name. <laughs> thank you. The name is what came to me first. Uh, I was like, wow, that's what I'm talking about. It would be a great Lord of the Rings podcast name. But I don't know anything about Lord of the Rings, so that I can't host it. But someone else can. Um, and then I was like, well, there are a lot of podcasts out there of people experiencing things for the first time. So that's what I did. I read the books. I watched the movies. I read The Hobbit, watched The Hobbit movies. And um, I'm almost done reading The Silmarillion now. Um, oh I'm very, man. yeah, deep. very, ups- I was very grateful because the uh, Rings of Power season one kind of gave me a little bit of a break, but now I have to go <laughs> back in. So <laughs> Silmarillion is where I, is where I, I love it. All of it's great. Silmarillion is where I tapped out because I started reading that book yeah. and I was like, this is, it's too deep. It's, it's too deep. It's rough. For me. There's too many characters and names um 
even more confusing. There are characters and, and, and names that have the same names as things that we know from Lord of the Rings, but they are not the same people. There's a Denethor and there's a Boromir, but they're elves and they <laughs> die very early on in the first age. So <laughs> it's so funny because like in real life, I can tell the difference between people who have the same name. But in a story, I always have this sense of like, how dare they give these people the same name? Mm -hmm. what, it's what it's were very they, difficult. <laughs> <laughs> what were they thinking? Uh, so we talked a little bit about this with Delia. But as you know, tonight we're uh, writing some climate focused letters to help drive folks to the polls in Pennsylvania. Um, really important state when it comes to elections yes very like... important work everyone who's doing these letter writings i need to find some time later this week and do some um very important work for everyone doing that yeah it's fun though it's like it's like a little little pen pal situation yeah oh my get, gosh get get an eagle to come by and deliver your letter for you is that how mail works only if it's only if it's convenient for the eagles so um <laughs> Probably I wouldn't rely on, on the Eagles to deliver these letters. Do they have a postal system in Middle Earth? Like, it's probably just people riding on horses, right? Um, the only thing I can say to speak to the pulse postal system is that in the Fellowship of the Ring book, Gandalf leaves a note to be delivered to the Shire, telling the hobbits like where he is and where to meet them. And uh, the barman that he leaves the note with forgot, forgets to deliver it, forgets to okay. send it. So, so really kind of a shoddy system that they're Yeah, with. yeah. We're probably better off in, in this world. <laughs> it is really, the postal system is something. I know there's all kinds of problems with it, but it is something that makes me realize, like, wow, we really, we have come a long way as a society. That for the most part, all your letters you're going to write tonight, they're going to get delivered and they're going to be read by a real human being on the other side. And that's very exciting. Yeah, that's a beautiful, I love it when people, when I know that there's another person on the other side, because in yeah. the internet age, I feel like you don't always get that. You can't know. always know if someone's going to be reading it or someone's going to be receiving it. I also think there's, if you're writing a lot of letters and your hand's getting tired, there's actually kind of value in that in this kind of exercise because if you screw up and like have to cross something out like that's very authentic looking they're gonna know a real person wrote that um <laughs> there you go let's talk about lord of the rings um what we talked a little bit with delhi about this but what do you think what do you find are some of the like broader connections between lord of the rings rings of power etc the whole pantheon um, and climate and what we're experiencing now. Yeah. Um, first of all, just the fact that Tolkien was the, like a huge tree hugger, um, that boy loves some nature and you really see that come through in all of his writings. And sometimes it's very annoying and it's like, I don't need to know the history of this blade of grass. But nonetheless, his love for nature, his love for, you know, appreciating that beauty really comes through. Um, and uh, I always love to point out that, um, maybe not point out because it's all, you know, speculation or whatever, but the character Tom Bombadil is basically a Tolkien self insert. And Tom Bombadil is this uh, crazy guy for people who don't know. He was cut out of the movies. Um, I'm very... I will be writing multiple letters <laughs> to Peter Jackson uh, because he cut out P uh, Tom Bombadil. Um, but he is this like crazy guy in the forest who has this connection with nature. Um, he is not the master of, I was just like rereading some of this chapter. He's not the master of nature, but he is there to oversee it, to take care of it because all of these things in nature exist in their own right. And he is just there to, appreciate it and and you know value it um and that was like you know tolkien being like isn't nature great everyone don't you just want to put on a yellow hat and dance around the woods and sing a song <laughs> <laughs> um sorry go ahead we had we had carter from seaweed brain pod on earlier and we were talking about percy jackson and there's a whole through line in percy jackson with 
uh, the god Pan and the god of nature and there being like kind of a chaotic element to Pan as well. I think it's very interesting that we have like this picture of nature as chaos mm. um, when it's not, right? Everything yeah. we know about nature is like it is all designed to work really together in, these in beauty all, yeah yeah and these systems that all work together and i think it's a funny thing that we have this uh idea of chaos around it yeah and perhaps we are the chaos no <laughs> so true yeah anyway that's my, that's um, my Lord of the Rings. no that's great and what's so what's so funny like you are absolutely right that tom bombadil is just like a representation of like he he is um a like chaotic neutral on the you know uh-huh. Um, alignment chart uh-huh. um, and then the other huge representation of you know nature in Lord of the Rings is really the opposite of chaos I think and it's the Ents and they are very um, I think lo- looking at this story of the Ents and Saruman um, and what Saruman does to destroy their home and destroy you know their people so to speak um is really it's a very like poignant message to us reading it um it, it's very can very easily be seen to us as a cautionary tale of this is what depending depending on what story you're going off of the the book or the movie they are a little bit different <laughs> and i did point this out because i love the ants they're my favorite part of the story um and so watching two towers for the first time i was like where are the ants? There, this doesn't have <laughs> nearly enough ants. Where are the ants? <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but either way, both of their stories end with them being moved to action and finally doing something about that. Um, and again, it's it's a cautionary tale for us about, you know, don't wait for that moment where, so the ant wives are gone. They have like no more entings, entlings. Um, a lot of their world has been destroyed there are basically no more ints anymore because of this you know saruman and other greater evils moving in on them and they're this dying species and luckily they do stand up and it's i mean just that part in the two towers movie um when they're, you know, they're cutting back and forth between Helm's Deep and then the Ents marching on Isengard and the flood is coming up and yeah. then that one Ent that's on fire like sticks his head in the water <laughs> to let himself out. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just so magnificent. And now I'm just remembering the music that goes with that scene. Anyway, okay, it's maybe good. I just need to go over your watch Two Towers. <laughs> um, but it's just like such a beautiful message of like, standing up and finally realizing like, no, we need to, uh, you know, we need to do something. Um, and also like, who are the people that move them to do that? These two little tiny guys, not even the main characters, not even mm-hmm. Frodo and Sam, Mary and Pippin. Mary and Pippin are the ones that say, hey, Ents, how's it going over here? Oh, by the way, the guy Saruman is destroying a lot of your land a lot of your your brothers and well not sisters because again Mm -hmm. the aunt wives are gone um Mm -hmm. but (laughs) your friends you know your family your kin they're all gone and what's left of you you have to do something and that's so wonderful uh of story to read and a little bit scary when you're like oh tolkien wrote this 70 years ago and it's still you know, relevant and hitting home today. We're, we are always, we are always fighting the fights that our ancestors fought before us. Mm -hmm. I, um, this is, this is not a fantasy book at all, but there's, um, uh, a book called Four Lost Cities and it talks about, um, some really like ancient, cities the most famous one in it is pompeii but there's uh cahokia and um uh a couple a couple more and there's a chapter about one that is in uh cambodia and part of it talks about how they have like records from the city at that time we're talking like thousands and thousands of years ago but where uh the like king basically was saying 
uh, we're building this reservoir so we have, you know, lots of abundant water in the city and I want to make sure that it runs in this direction because that's the direction of the king and it's really important that the reservoir be built to honor me. And then there are like engineers of that time who who write have written down like uh if we do this there's going to be flooding like really big flooding um and they're just like no there won't it'll be fine i'm the king listen to me and so they had to like they built it and they think that's part of why the city got abandoned because there just ended up being all these floods and this is not something that is happening in 2022 this is thousands of years ago mm -hmm. thousands of years ago like climate change it's big it's kind of new we know we got to take action on it but like we are we are fighting a fight that that are you know heroes before us have done the ends before us have done and you know we can do it too and whether you're like frodoing frodoing about it and being the main character and taking all the energy or you're like a Merry and Pippin and all mm -hmm. you want to do is just eat some breakfast and have some laughs and have a good time you can you can be a part of the fight too I love yes. Mary, I love yes. Merry and Pippin like uh I love Merry and Pippin for just being being the heroes that are like not meant to be the heroes I know I really I love it so much. Yeah. yeah. And just even even more so that like they kind of just it, it in the, in the books it's a little bit different in in the movie but in the books they like they go on this quest like purely for the sake of friendship yeah. and and st and you know rather than them like stumbling into to Sam and mm -hmm. and Frodo as they're running away with you know stolen vegetables. <laughs> um but they yeah they like all they're like Oh, you have to go do something very crazy and you know daunting. We're going with you, and don't you dare try and tell us no. <laughs> I think it's beautiful. I love. I mean, that's that's part of why everyone connects so strongly to the whole like Tolkien world. I think is because mm -hmm. like I don't know. I mean, you're much deeper into it than I am, but there. are there are awesome heroes and all the legends of men and the incredible, beautiful world of the elves and uh, everything else. But like, I feel like most people just sort of see themselves as a hobbit. Yeah. They're just like, I want to be cozy. I want to have as many breakfasts as possible. Yeah. And why do I have to fight in this ridiculous struggle? Yes. And... <laughs> Uh, I'm going to butcher this quote because I can't remember it exactly. But, you know, Frodo says, I wish this had not happened to me. Mm -hmm. um, and Gandalf says, so do all who, who live to, who see, live such to see such times. times. But what matters is what we do with that time. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. There's some, there is some real good. There is some real There's some like, like whoppers of wisdom in there um, yeah. in between the paragraphs about blades of grass. <laughs> I, and the blades of grass are important as well. They're important too. They're That's important. That's how we get the home for the ends. Um, this has, listen, so folks are still, I can see in our little dashboard, I got back in there, people are still adopting their voters. It's happening. I'm very excited about it. Um, I'm trying to get the exact number to tell people um i can just see like it just pops up with like so and so claimed uh you know 20 voters and i'm like cool how many people totaled it anyway point being everyone's still writing their letters if you're watching this up through october 29th you can still adopt some voters and send them their letters um do you have anything sort of in the in the realm of uh, the Tolkien world that you would tell people to just encourage them to continue the work that they're doing and continue fighting for the climate? Yeah, um, I mean the the general message of of Tolkien and Lord of the Rings is again like we were talking about with the Hobbits, you know, 
Um, Galadriel in, I think it's Fellowship of the Ring, says even the smallest person can change the course of the future. It's it's not Gandalf, it's not Aragorn, it's not a whole army that defeats Sauron. It's Frodo, and more importantly, that that choice that he makes at the Council of Elrond and stands up and says, I will take the ring. Oh my God, what a great story <laughs> this guy wrote. Um, it's just so, isn't it just so great? Oh my God. And then, but also at the same time, you know, it's not just on you. You also have this fellowship coming together and they are fighting and they're using their own strengths to do what they can on this, you know, battlefront. And they're like, okay, well, our friend Frodo is at Mount Doom. What can we do to help? How can we use our resources? And Aragorn's like, I'm going to push through these doors and look really hot doing it. And <laughs> Legolas is going to use his elf eyes to, to, you know, defeat, to beat Gimli in their counting game. So yeah. uh, just, just so many like wonderful messages about people coming together from all walks of life and doing what they can in, you know, uh, a fight against evil. And it's scary when we're talking about climate change, because it's, it's like the bad guy, you know, the bad guy is us, the bad guy is, it's so hard. And it's so you can feel so out of control. Um, and that's why, you know, elections and voting is can be really great is because it's a way for you to step up and, and use what power you can in situations like this where you're like I don't know what to do what steps do I take mm -hmm. um, and voting is such a wonderful powerful thing that you can do yeah that's fantastic that's fantastic also I'd, I'd love to give a little terrible maybe history lesson about something that I learned that I just find so fascinating which is in the 60s and 70s there was like a counterculture movement that used the phrase frodo lives yeah, as a yeah. um slogan as a rallying cry of you know kind of banding together and like hey the little guy you know isn't gonna get kicked down we're gonna get up and we're gonna keep fighting and the and frodo lives even went beyond like a, a you know people who are familiar with Tolkien. And I, I love that. So if you're writing a letter, maybe, you know, add a little PS and do a hashtag Frodo lives or something. And then people will be like, what is this person on about? Or maybe they'll see, hey, they like Lord of the Rings. I like yeah. this person. I am going to go vote. This is this is not a small fandom. Like there is a very solid chance you put something like that in there and people are going to be like, I do have I do have warm feelings for Frodo and I will go for it. Like, you know, tell your personal stories in these letters. And if the personal story includes Frodo, just own up to that. Just do it. Because there's a lot of people like you that will love it. Mary Clay, thank you so much for being here this evening. Thank I... you so much for having me. I hope I didn't scream too much about ants. <laughs> you screamed exactly the right amount. That's why Good. we wanted you Good. here. Uh, if people want to hear you screaming about ants in other places, where should yes. they go? <laughs> um, you can listen to my podcast. That's what I'm talking about. Wherever you get podcasts, there are new episodes every Tuesday. So there will be one out tomorrow. Um, if you've been watching Rings of Power... Tomorrow's episode will be a kind of recap of all of our feelings and thoughts on the season one as a whole. There were a lot of thoughts. Um, and then you can follow the podcast on social media at Tolkien About Pod. And you can follow me on TikTok at MC WhatsApp. Yay. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, I'm going to send you off to the Green Dragon with Delia. Uh, yes, I can't wait to join her. It's going to be so fun. <laughs> Have a great night, Mary Clay. Thank you, Phantom Forward, for doing this and bringing people together to work on this very important cause. And thank you 
so much for inviting me to be a part of your live stream. If you are listening to this episode right now, go look up all of your voter information if you are able to. Double check your polling place. Make sure that hasn't changed since the last time you voted. You can look on Ballotpedia to see the candidates that will be on your exact ballot. And you can do some research ahead of time. So that way you're not standing there in the voting booth and you're like, ah, who are these people? Who do I vote for? And if you're one of those people who gets anxious about parking, even look it up on Google Maps, you know, do whatever you need to to get yourself ready to vote. Vote, please.